we know that when temperature change, it causes change in length, in the shape, in the area, and in the volume of a body. It made this change might be expansion or contraction. Strain caused by temperature change is called thermal strain. All right, and we can determine that thermal strain from this equation. Epsilon sub T stands for thermal strain, and it's calculated from alpha times delta T. Similar to that, we can determine thermal deformation. Thermal deformation is change in the length caused by temperature change. We call that delta sub T, and that is simply strain times the initial length, so that is epsilon T times L, and that is equal to alpha delta T L. Okay? These two strain and deformations are those that are caused by temperature. Parameters that we have are alpha, which is coefficient of thermal expansion. It depends on the material, so it's a material property. It's intrinsic properties of material. The second parameter is delta T. It stands for the change in temperature. And the last parameter is L, which is the initial length of the element. The coefficient of thermal expansion, or alpha, measured in the lab, so we need to do the test to see how much is that, but it is typically constant for a certain material. So we can determine that once and use that for different bodies made from same materials. The typical values are given in this table. The highest one belongs to the aluminum, which you, if you compare aluminum with steel, the aluminum material expands higher compared to steel when it's subjected to temperature change. On the other side, we have quartz, which has a very low thermal expansion, so it doesn't change a lot when it's subjected to temperature. One important thing that I would like to highlight here is the difference between the strain caused by temperature and the strain caused by force. One is the thermal strain, and the other one is the elastic strain. Thermal strain is the one that is caused by change in temperature, is the one that we just talked about. So epsilon sub T is alpha times delta T. But there is another strain which is caused by force. This is the one that we talked about that in the beginning of the class. So this strain is shown with epsilon sub E. E stands for elastic. It's calculated from the Hooke's law. So it is sigma over E. Sigma is E epsilon. Here I wrote epsilon is sigma over E. Note that these two strains are different from each other. We can't set them equal to each other, or we can't determine one from the other one. These are two separate strains. How much would be the total strain in the system if a system subjects to both temperature change and force? In that case, we need to add the effect of each one together. So total strain, or epsilon, is simply epsilon E plus epsilon T. Okay? That is how we can determine the total strain in a system which is subjected to, say, uh, both forces and temperature. Remember, that doesn't change the definition of strain. The definition of strain was delta over L, or change in the length divided by initial length. But what causes that change in the length? This deformation may be caused by change in temperature, or might be caused by applied force, but definition of a strain will be the same. All right, 